Do you see which one I'm looking at right there? This might actually be silver. Oh my gosh, guys. It's American. Look at that. I basically stopped because I saw a foreign coin. Look at this right here. This is what I saw. I don't even know what to put for the title and the thumbnail of this video at this point, guys. This is an unbelievable find. Now let's flip this over and see what we get for a date. Three, two, one. What? Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new series called Coin Shortage Hunting. As I'm sure everybody's well aware of at this point, we are living in some seriously messed up times. Not only has this pandemic affected our physical, mental, and financial health, but it's also affected our favorite hobby of coin roll hunting. The reason for that is that back in July it was announced that the United States was facing a national coin shortage. Basically, since people are going out way less this year than they normally would, we have a huge decrease in the amount of coins that are circulating. On top of that, they also slowed down production of the new 2020 coins, so there's going to be a less of those going out to businesses as well. Now, when you take decreased circulation and decreased production and you put them together, what you get is a national coin shortage. Now, how this affects you personally is going to depend entirely on where you live and what banks you go to. Unfortunately for me, my main bank where I have a business account, which I use to get the majority of my coins, is only willing to give me 10 rolls of each denomination per week. And that is exactly what you see in front of you on the table here. I have 10 rolls of quarters, 10 rolls of dimes, 10 rolls of pennies, and 10 rolls of nickels. Now guys, it is kind of disheartening not to be able to get the boxes of coins like I used to be able to get, but I am kind of trying to look at this as an opportunity to look at some different denominations, have a little bit of variety in the hunts, and I am happy that I'm still able to get this every week, so we are gonna be able to put out one of these hunts every single week. On top of that, the majority of these rolls are customer wrapped, as you can see, and that is potentially gonna set us up for a big score. One final positive that I'll throw out there is that doing hunts like this does give me the opportunity opportunity to use every single one of my Quinn's Coins coin roll hunting placemats. We have our penny mat right here. Over here in the middle, we have our nickel placemat, which we'll be using on the nickels. And then of course, we have the brand new silver stacking placemat, which we'll be able to use on the dimes and the quarters. I did mention this in last week's video, but this silver stacking placemat is brand new, fresh off of the printers, and it's up on the Quinn's Coins website. If you want to get one of these for yourself, make sure to head on over to quinzcoins.com and I'll be putting links down in the description below. At the time of filming, I've only sold about a third of these original 100 silver stacking placemats and if you don't know why these are special make sure to check out that video i will put a link to it right here but with that being said guys i'm super excited to get into these rolls i have an ender on just about every single denomination which is absolutely wild one of them is super crazy so we're gonna get into that right now so guys here we have our four best enders from each denomination and i gotta say the quarters literally blow all of these other ones out of the water it's just an unbelievable find super super rare and right on the end of the roll let's go ahead and and take a look so as you can see right here this is a West Point quarter you can see the W mint mark to the right of, of uh, Washington's head there and then on the left hand side you actually see this little privy mark and I'll zoom in for you so you can see that this V75 that I don't know what that stands for and uh, I haven't been hunting quarters long enough to know this uh, but what I can tell you is that that makes this a 2020 quarter rather than a 2019 quarter uh, which does not have that mark but uh, they only made 10 million of these per year. That's 2 million for uh, each of the five denominations. And uh, these are just absolutely crazy rare. They're very difficult to find, uh, but they do pop up in circulation. And that's, I think, the whole point of it was to get people to try and look for these coins. And uh, I just found my first one, and it's an ender nonetheless. Unbelievable, guys. And also, this was the only uh, denomination where I actually had machine-wrapped rolls. All of the other ones are uh, customer-wrapped. But that is just so crazy to see, guys. I'm really excited to get into that one. And then for the rest of these rolls, we do actually have a couple more enders. If you take a look at this one right here, we actually have a Canadian dime on the end of that dime roll. So that's pretty cool. Something new, something interesting to look at. I don't think it's silver, but just in case it is, you know, there's always a chance. And then uh, for the pennies, we actually have a 2009, and that's the formative years. There were four uh, designs made in that year, and they are all low mintage. So definitely want to be looking out for those ones and happy to have one on the end. And then as far as nickels go, we didn't really get anything. The best I could find was this bison nickel from 2005. Nothing really crazy though. There is an air to look out for on that one though. So we will definitely be checking that out. So of course, you know, we have to start with that West Point Ender, the quarter on the end of the roll right there with the privy mark. We know we have a 2020 coin. There's five different possibilities, all of equal rarity. Like I said, 2 million per year. So let's go ahead and open this one live on camera. And uh, as you can see, this is a completely sealed roll. This is the only one uh, out of all of the denominations that's actually completely sealed. All of the quarter rolls are that way. 
and uh, I'm really excited to get into this one. So let's go ahead and start peeling it back here and see what we're gonna get for the design on this coin, guys. I don't actually know a whole lot about 2020 designs. Uh, I do know that there's one with, with a bat on it, and I think that's the American Samoas. Uh, definitely a cool coin. I think that's pretty much the only one I know, though, so I am kind of hoping for that one. It is kind of strange to have uh, a coin designed with some bats on it, you know, uh, seeing as what is going on in 2020. But, yeah, that's the one I'm hoping for anyway. Uh, that is so cool to see the West Point mark right there on the right-hand side and the Privy mark on the left. So let's go ahead and flip this one over now and see what we get for a design in three, two, one. Oh, guys, look at that. We got it. The National Park American Samoa 2020 quarter West Point. That is so so cool oh my gosh guys that is definitely my favorite uh design for 2020 and as a matter of fact i'm actually thinking about uh, when i do redesign this mat i'm going to make some slight changes to it i might put this coin on there because i love it so much just a really really cool coin not to mention the west point mint mark right there and as you can see we have that on the placemat here 2019 to date uh, you can find these west point quarters this is my first one and i am definitely very excited to have that now, let's take a look at the edges of these coins right here. As you can see, I'm not really seeing any silver. I do see some newer looking coins though, particularly right there and right there. And uh, actually one of the features of this placemat here, over here on the right hand side of the reverse, uh, we actually have what all of these rims are gonna look like. And uh, as you can see, all of them basically look like that clad rim right there uh, with slight variations for you know older and newer coins. I'm not seeing any silver though. So we'll go ahead and dump these out and uh, we'll just kind of start looking through them, see if we have anything pop out for us. Obviously going to be looking for more 2020s. Um, anything with a W mint mark on it is definitely going to be a keeper. Um, and of course, if you find a San Francisco mark as well, that would be a keeper as well. But uh, not really seeing anything yet. I haven't even seen another 2020 coin uh, come out yet. So we'll just keep looking. I actually do see a 2019. That is something that we want to be looking out for uh, because some of these will have the West Point Mint Mark, but that one's just gonna be Philadelphia. Like the majority of these are going to be Philadelphia and Denver Mint Marks, um, but of course, you know, wanna look out for those Ws because they really don't come up that often. All right, there is a 2019. I actually found a San Francisco of this San Antonio Missions Quarter in a previous video. Uh, if you haven't seen that yet, hopefully you'll be able to check that out. This one's just a Denver though, in really great shape, obviously, because it is a pretty brand new coin. All right, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to start with quarters and we're just going to work our way through these quarters um, because that definitely had the best ender. So I'm going to go ahead and open up one more live on camera and then I'll kind of go to uh, some off camera hunting to try and keep things interesting. A lot of times quarters don't end up having a ton of uh, super interesting stuff. We'll take a look at those edges again uh, to see if we have any silver. I personally haven't found any silver yet. Um, uh, and uh, I really haven't found a whole lot of anything in the quarters other than a few. Uh, I guess I have found a couple of error coins in previous videos. Didn't find a West Point quarter though until now, so I am super stoked uh, about that. There is an error in the Delaware quarter though that I do want to be looking out for. Uh, I think it's called the Spitting Horse, basically a die crack over here. Uh, coming it makes it look like it's coming out of uh, the horse's mouth, but I don't see anything on that one. All right, just kind of moving real slowly through these coins. Another one to check for right here. Uh, we want to look for an extra leaf on that piece of corn right there. And I don't see it on this one, so I'll put that one back, move on to the next. There's tons and tons of quarters to check, guys, and I'm learning new things every time I go through these quarters, especially reading through your comments and uh, making sure I didn't miss anything. There's a 2019 we want to check for the W. Don't see it. And, uh, okay, there's a, another 2019 right there. See if we got a W on that one. Nope. I would be very, very surprised if another W came out of these 10 rolls. 10 rolls is not a whole lot uh, to be looking through in order to actually have a chance at finding a W. So that's why I'm so shocked that we were able to get it on the end of the roll. So out of those two rolls, that's definitely, it looks like it's the only thing that's going to be coming out for us. I'm going to go through a few more rolls, guys, and I will turn the camera back on when I find something good. And if not, I'll see you when we get to the dimes. Holy heck, guys, this was super unexpected. I'm about halfway through the second roll that I've done off camera, and I came across this one right here, which hardly looks different, but it had a slight mirror-like finish on it. And when I looked at the mint mark, I saw this. 
and you can see it right here, we actually have a San Francisco mint mark, which like I was saying earlier, these are typically proof or the type of business strike coins that you have to pay the mint for. They're not intended for circulation whatsoever. And uh, it's always a mystery how these get into circulation. I'm sure there's plenty of stories behind that. But we just got a San Francisco right there. This one looks, it almost looks fake, honestly. Looking at that hair, it, it just looks completely different from what you're, you would normally see. Now, I'm not sure what the year is going to be on this one, so we'll go ahead and flip this over and find out in 3, 2, 1. Okay, 2002, Louisiana. That is crazy, guys. I'm kind of wishing I would have been able to get the rest of this box because it looks like it would have been a great box. And uh, as you can see, we were just four rolls in. We have a West Point quarter and a San Francisco. Now, I think that this one is definitely a proof, though, just looking at uh, that mirror-like finish. Some of it has been lost over time, but you can still see that some of it uh, is there. Now, one other thing that I wanted to show you in the last roll we looked through, I did get another 2020 coin. This one is Weir Farm, and I uh, just wanted to quickly check this one for a W, and it doesn't look like we're going to get it. That's a Denver right there. But uh, anyways, while we have the camera on, we may as well go through uh, the rest of these coins to see if anything else pops out. Okay, we just got another 2020 right there. Looks like this one's going to be, what is that, the Salt River Base. Let's flip this one over and see if we can get a W on that one. Nope, just a Philadelphia that time, but that's okay. We have plenty of good coins as far as quarters go. We are on a huge, huge streak at this point. There's a Lowell, uh, but I, I can see it's already a, a Philadelphia Mint, so nothing too special there, guys. We have six more rolls to go. I'll turn the camera back on if I find something good. All right, guys, I'm kind of freaking out here because we actually have a chance for silver right now. Second roll from the end, and uh, take a look at this, guys. Do you see which one I'm looking at right there? It's all the way over there on the left side. Now, a lot of times these coins will fool you. They actually end up being Canadians, especially up here in Michigan. But I don't know about this one, guys. That actually looks pretty good. And actually, if you look over here, these are the quarters. Uh, the silver, you can see, has a little bit of, uh, I, I don't know, I guess a lighter tone to it. And uh, the Canadians don't have that. Guys, this might actually be silver. And if we get this out of just 10 rolls, that would be absolutely incredible now it's just the third one from the end there i don't know it could be canadian silver as well as you can see there that is something that you can find so let's go ahead and pull this one out here and uh, see what it's going to be oh my gosh guys it's american look at that that is an american quarter which means this is definitely going to be silver okay let's just pull it out here and see what it's going to be so we have the reverse right there this is a silver quarter, guys. We've only been through two boxes plus 10 rolls now, I guess nine. An American silver quarter right there. Now let's flip this over and see what we get for a date. Three, two, one. What? 1954. I was expecting a 64, which is like the most common silver quarter to come out. We just got a 1954 silver quarter in a roll of quarters. That is unheard of, guys. Silver quarters are one of the hardest coins to find, and uh, the reason for that is because everybody knows they look different. They always take them out of circulation. Quarters circulate so much, people are always pulling these out. Man, I wish I could have got this entire box, because just this first 10 rolls has already produced three amazing coins. And honestly, I'm not sure which one I'm more excited about, the silver or the West Point quarter. I guess the silver. I mean, I think West Point quarters are even easier to find than these these days. Unbelievable, guys. 1954. I don't see a mint mark there, so this is just going to be a 1954 Philadelphia quarter. Unbelievable, guys. That is so cool. All right, I'm going to put that to the side, and uh, we will go through the rest of this roll off camera because I don't see anything else that looks too noteworthy. I do have a few more coins over here, but we'll get to those once we get into that last roll. All right, guys, so this is our last quarter roll, and just in case anything crazy comes out, now that I know that these rolls are capable of silver, I just wanted to get this one live, and uh, so we'll go ahead and see what we have in here. Uh, do you see any silver edges? Not this time. Unfortunately, that's usually how it goes, but I do see quite a few... Uh, newer looking coins so I'll go ahead and look through these and get to back to you guys in just a sec all right so I just finished going through that roll I have a few things to show you let me go ahead and dump some of these coins real quick and we will take a look at some of the coins that we got out of this uh, last few rolls here so these are our 2019 slash 2018 or 2020 rather uh, I have a whole bunch of bicentennials here these are the 1976 quarters that have the drummer boy on them I do like to keep those 
Uh, I just kind of spend them and it's kind of cool to, to do that. But anyway, uh, I do have the 2020 and 2019 coins that I was able to find. If I found them uh, the reverse side up and I already saw the mint mark, then I just threw it back. But uh, these are all the ones that I haven't seen the mint mark on so far. So we're going to flip these over real quick and just see if we have uh, any West Point mint marks. So that one's going to be a Denver. How about that one? That's a Philadelphia. And uh, let's see. Maybe we can flip them like this. Oh, no, nope, that's not. Wait a minute. Isn't that how that? No, that's upside down. Okay, so that's a Philadelphia. And we, we have a Lowell 2019 right here. That's a Philadelphia. Salt River Bay, Philadelphia. And uh, let's just go, ahead, go ahead and flip them like this, see if we get anything like that. Philadelphia, Philadelphia. What do we have there? Looks like Philadelphia and Philadelphia. So all Philadelphia and I think one or two at Denver in there. With that being said, let's go ahead and get onto the dimes. All right, so here is our stack of dimes. We have 10 rolls right here. I'm gonna go ahead and set them down for you so you can see those. And uh, just real quick, I can't believe that we found this, guys. This is unbelievable, 1954 silver quarter. Let me know down in the comments if you hunt quarters, how many boxes it took you before you got your first silver. But anyways, guys, we do have to get into these dimes now. Maybe there's even more silver in there. I'm trying to remember where that ender was. Was it over here on this side? Yes, it was. So there is our Canadian coin. This one definitely doesn't look silver to me, and you're going to see the difference here in just a second uh, between a silver edge and a regular Canadian-looking edge. Uh, so I don't have a silver coin to compare it to, but maybe we'll be able to just kind of look at it um, Kind of next to the quarter there. So the problem with these uh, customer app rolls I can't really rip them apart like I typically can with a uh, machine wrap roll. I think I missed one But uh, so they're, they're gonna be a little bit messy is, is what I'm trying to say But anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at that Canadian dime uh, which kind of exploded there <laughs> Onto the placemat. You can see somebody crossed this one out a few times Let's take a look at the front side of it and see what we have for a date. So we have 1984. Basically what you're going to want to be looking for if you're looking for silver Canadian dimes is pre-1968 and then I think about half of 1968 have 50% silver in them as well. The way you're going to be able to tell is with a magnet. So if it's magnetic, it's not silver. And uh, if it isn't magnetic, then it is silver. This one we know for a fact is not just because of the date. So we will put that one to the side though. It's kind of cool to see. And uh, I guess let's just go through some of these dimes. Dimes are notoriously... Uh, pretty difficult to get silver in as well. I think your best shot for silver is probably going to be half dollars, uh, which is something that I do plan to do in the future. I am kind of having a hard time getting half dollars right now, though, obviously because of uh, the coin shortage and my bank is being a real stickler about that kind of thing. So fortunately, uh, I have not been able to get any yet. But we do have a whole bunch of dimes here to look through. And actually, look at that, guys. We have another Canadian in this roll. That might have actually been the ender. I'm not sure what happened over here. Everything kind of exploded. Uh, this one's a little bit older, though, 1980. And uh, we'll just flip it over to the obverse real quick to take a look. As you can see, that one's also been scratched. I don't know what it is with people scratching up Canadian coins here in the United States. I see it happen quite a bit. But anyways, guys, that is going to be the end of that roll. So I will get into the rest of these rolls. I don't have super high hopes for these dimes, but if something does come out, I will definitely be the first one to let you know. So I kind of figured out a way uh, to open these, and it basically involves just like wrapping around and around and around. And uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I guess on camera it doesn't work. But uh, anyway, there we go. There are our dimes, and I'll just kind of put them like this so we can see if we have any silver... Uh, at least in that section of the roll. I don't see any. It all looks clad to me. So I am going to go through and look for uh, those 2009s uh, because that is something that I would like to find. We did not get any today. I will show you what we did get, though. We got a couple of Canadians, which I showed you earlier uh, in the hunt. Those came out of the first roll. Both of them did. We also got our first 2020 dimes, which I thought was kind of cool to see. So we have a 2020 Denver right there. And then here we have a 2020 Philadelphia. One other kind of interesting find, you can see that uh, the copper on this coin is sort of uh, showing through onto the edge of the coin, which it really isn't supposed to be doing. So uh, I don't know. This is kind of an interesting coin. I'm not seeing it on that obverse, but definitely uh, on the reverse. And I'll try to zoom. What the heck? It's stuck on my glove there. But I'll try to zoom in here and see if we can get some of that. You can see right there that copper is showing through. That may just be post-mint damage, but it also may be a result of a mint error. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys think on that one. So now that we're all the way through the dimes, we're going to go ahead and swap out this silver stacking placemat for a penny placemat. And of course, we're going to also want to swap our tray of dimes out 
for a tray of pennies. So there we go, guys. Let's go ahead and jump right into these now. I'll uh, put it on the 2009 cents here because that's actually what we have uh, on the ender of this one. It's not on that end, but it is on this end. So there we go. We have the formative years, uh, 2009 cent. Who knows what's in the rest of this roll, but we are going to take a look at this one first. You can see right here, it's the second in the series. These are all pretty rare. And uh, surprisingly, a lot of people actually don't know uh, that these 2009 cents even exist, let alone that they are actually kind of rare compared to other coins. So let's take a look at the ender there. It's going to be a Philadelphia. And uh, as you can see here, formative years for the third time, as you see on that coin right there. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at some of these other coins in the roll and see if we have any wheat pennies. Uh, I know quite a bit more about pennies than I do with quarters and dimes. Obviously going to be looking for anything old uh, pre-1959 is going to be the wheat pennies, so we're going to be looking for those for sure. And uh, of course, anything older than that, if we were able to get into the Indian head sense or maybe even a flying eagle, that's actually possible in uh, these customer wrapped rolls. It's not possible, as far as I know, in the machine wrapped because a flying eagle scent would actually be rejected by the machine. But when you have these customer wrapped rolls, I have heard stories of people actually finding these coins. So maybe we'll get one in this series. I don't know. Uh, oh, another thing that you can only pretty much get in customer wrapped is the 1943 steel scent. So we'll be looking out for those as well. I uh, didn't find anything in that first roll other than that 2009 formative years. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get on to the next one and I'll let you guys know if I find something good. All right, guys. So very next roll now, and we just hit a wheat penny about halfway through the roll. And I can see a Canadian over here as well. So we'll be checking that out too. So let's go ahead and zoom in on this bad boy. Nice looking wheat penny right there. Definitely going to be probably 40s or 50s. Let's go ahead and flip it over to find out here. Three, two, and one. All right, 1944. Pretty common date, but nice to see a wheat come out very early uh, in the hunt. We are only on the second roll at this point. Still have a few more to look at uh, in this roll. So let's go ahead and zoom out a bit and take a look at the rest of these coins to see if we're going to get another wheat penny or something else out of this roll. We do have that Canadian coming up here, so... We'll grab that one and take a look. So it's a Queen Elizabeth. This is probably going to be in the 80s. Let's flip it over and see. Yep, 1985. That is a copper penny right there. If you guys keep copper, it's something to keep in mind. Uh, a lot of the, the Canadian coins that you find are copper as well. So be on the lookout for those. But that is it for that roll, guys. We'll get into the next one, and I'll let you know what I'm finding. All right, so just real briefly going through these. Uh, haven't seen any 2009s. Haven't seen any wheat pennies either, so... I think that, uh, I don't know, that <laughs> not really looking too good for the pennies. That's about average, maybe a little lower than average. Uh, but I guess the good thing about these hunts, if you skunk out in the pennies and the dimes, you could still make it up in the nickels and the quarters. We definitely set the bar pretty high uh, when we found that silver quarter, which I'm still have not been able to get over, guys. 1954, are you kidding me? But uh, yeah, I guess we're making up for it in the pennies here. Not really a whole lot uh, to write home about, but we do still have the nickels, so we'll go ahead and get into those now and see what we're going to get out of those. All right, so now let's swap out our placemat one last time. We are going to be getting rid of the penny placemat and bringing in the nickel placemat. This is the reverse side. Let's take a look at that obverse side. This is going to show us all the nickels that we could possibly find. And uh, I do have to remind you guys that we still have a chance to find silver when we're looking through the nickels. I haven't had a whole lot of luck with it. It's definitely what I've been struggling with in my Nickels Coin Quest series is finding those silver uh, nickels to fill in into the collection. But it is definitely something that you can look for. 1942 to 1945 is going to be a silver war nickel. The way that you know is if you see the mint mark up there above the Monticello. So with that being said, let's grab our nickel tray, push this penny tray out of the way, and uh, we'll take a look at some of these nickels. So. I have to find, once again, where that ender is going to be. Oh, I finally guessed it right on the first try. It's going to be on that side, and uh, you can't really see it too well, but that is uh, the Bison, the 2005 version anyway. So we're just going to be starting with that roll because it's the best ender that I could find. Let's go ahead and push these out, and uh, I'll try to look at the edges because typically you can identify a silver nickel by the edge. Uh, now, I'm not seeing anything super colorful, which is usually you're looking for like a darker color, but I am seeing this one right here, which looks a little bit older. So I'll take a look at that real quickly. That one's just going to be a 1972. All right. With that being said, let's uh, just go ahead and take a look at the rest of these coins. See if we're going to get anything older or possibly like a 2009 uh, out of this first roll. 
2009 nickels are way harder to find than uh, the 2009 pennies. I think they're about on the same level as the 2009 dimes, which we weren't able to get any of those. And I usually find about one per box. There is our ender, by the way. It's what that looks like in case you were unaware. And then, uh, of course, on the reverse side, here's a little better look at that as well. Now, do you guys see the air that uh, we're looking for? We're looking for sort of, I think it's called the speared buffalo where we have a, uh, looks like a spear, but it's really just a die crack. I'm not seeing it on this one though. I'll put a picture up so you guys can see what that looks like, but I've never been able to find that one. All right guys, we are at the halfway point in the nickels now. Haven't found too much in the last few rolls, but this roll is already blowing my mind. You can see I have it, I pushed everything back. I pulled everything out for a second, about a third of the way. I saw the weird, crazy coins coming out of this roll. This is gonna be a good one, guys. Check this out. So. I basically stopped because I saw a foreign coin, which is kind of backing everything up, but I'm seeing, look at this. You see this dark color right here? I think that might actually be a war nickel. Oh, no, it's not, but I, I thought it was at first. There's another one that's even darker though, right here. Take a look at this. It, oh, that is a war nickel, guys. Look at that, 1942. The darkness on it, you can tell that's gonna be a war nickel. So this is already a great roll. I thought we had two, but we have one, that's okay. All right, but look at this right here. This is what I saw. <laughs> And this looks like some sort of game token, maybe like a foreign coin. This is definitely a strange, a very strange roll. Um, you can see it says no cash value on it. And uh, we have the war nickel over here. We'll get to that in a second. I want to see what else is going to come out of this roll, guys. Holy, holy heck. <laughs> um, I want to, oh, guys, look at that. Is that another war nickel right there? It might be. The 1942 actually was split, so there's uh, some of them are war nickels, some of them aren't but this is just an unbelievable roll so far. That looks like an absolutely pristine coin right there. Some of these coins are not super old, but they look like they're in really good condition. So, all right, let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of these coins now that they're out of the roll. I'll just start from the right and move towards those war nickels. We have at least one in the roll. So some of these coins are just regular nickels, you can tell. These ones here, the 96 and 97, it looks like, they're in really good shape, so I'm just gonna put them to the side unbelievable roll so far guys just based on what we've seen over here so here we're coming across our first potential war nickel oh my gosh you can see right next to it we have one right there as well i don't even know what to put for the title and the thumbnail of this video at this point guys this is an unbelievable find uh, on both the quarters and the nickels so we have a 42 right here let's flip this one over oh my gosh look at that a san francisco mint mark up there uh, above the Monticello. So that's our first silver nickel. Uh, if you want to know what these are worth, I think they're worth about a buck, maybe a buck fifty uh, in silver content alone. So uh, there is our first one right there, 1942 San Francisco. Let's take a look at this one. We have a Philadelphia mint mark and we'll flip it over to see the date. And we have a 1945. So we have some variety of silver war nickels and we're already up to more silver war nickels in this one roll than I've found in the past four boxes, which is unbelievable. So let's keep going here, see what else we're gonna get out of this amazing roll. A 1966 right there. We have a Denver right there, which means this is gonna be at least as old as 1964. Let's take a look at that. Oh, just gonna be a 1962, so we will throw that back. Let's move over here to the left side. We're up to two silver war nickels already. We're coming across this no cash value coin right here. And uh, let's take a look at that one real quickly just to see what we have. Huh, freedom, all right, that's pretty cool. It's a little bit bigger than a nickel, so kind of weird to find it in the roll, but oh, look at that. We came to, I didn't even see this at first. We have another uh, foreign coin. Looks like it's going to be Mexican, I believe. Yep. Uh, Estados Unidos Mexicanos, uh, which is United States of Mexico, I believe. And that is one peso. I think it's peso. I'm sure I'll get corrected if I'm wrong on that one. But anyways, guys, getting towards the end of this roll, obviously we're coming up against another 1942 war nickel. Let's see what we have for a mint mark on that. Ooh, it's another San Francisco. Very nice, very nice. And it uh, looks like we, <laughs> we have yet again another foreign coin. I'm not sure where this one is from. I want to say either China or Japan. Uh, it's very light, and I can't read a single thing on it other than that big one right there, so... I'll have to look up that one and see what we have on that. But anyways, I think that that is the end of the roll, guys. Three silver war nickels and then a whole bunch of uh, weird foreign coins. But 
three silver war nickels in a single uh, roll. I don't think I've ever gotten that before, so just that alone is a huge accomplishment. Anyways, we have five more nickel rolls to go, and then that will be the end of the hunt. What an amazing hunt so far. Hopefully we can get some more good stuff out of those rolls. All right, guys, I'm just two rolls later now, and I think I may have another silver war nickel. Last roll didn't have anything, but I'm definitely seeing the signs of it right here. I don't know what it is. I think it's the lettering that gives it away, but if you look at that, it definitely looks like one. It has a whole bunch of gunk on it though. So let's take a look at this coin right here and uh, we'll zoom in so that we can hopefully make out that date a little bit better. If We can figure out the zoom, there we go. All right, I'm definitely seeing 1940. It looks like 1944. We know that this is gonna be silver. It's definitely in that range, no doubt about it. Let's flip it over to see what we have for a mint mark. Three, two, and one. All right, 1944 Philadelphia. Now guys, I don't actually know my uh, my silver war nickel rare rarity, I guess you could say, um, very well because I just don't find very many of them. So we're actually gonna have to flip this placement over and uh, check in our low mintage ranges and uh, see if we actually have some rare uh, silver war nickels here because on top of the silver value, some of these coins actually have numismatic value as well. Obviously this one will need to be uh, cleaned up a little bit so that we can actually see it. It's got some really weird stuff on it, but definitely a keeper right there. So. That is an awesome, awesome find, guys. Let's go ahead and go through the rest of this roll. I don't really see anything crazy uh, off the top of my head here, so I will, uh, actually that, what is that? <laughs> that is that is stunning, guys, look at that. Let's zoom in on that one a little bit. Wow, look at that coin, 1967, beautiful shape. Flip it over to the reverse here. Wow, okay. This could be one of those special mint set coins, which were made from 65 to 67, I believe. That is stunning right there. Awesome find. I will put that one to the side. But other than that, I don't see anything else here. So I'll look through these for 2009s and get back to you guys when I find something else. All right, so I wasn't able to find anything else in that last roll, but I did want to look at our low mintage ranges for those war nickels. You can see uh, none of the war nickels actually make it into the key date ranges. I don't see any in that range. But uh, over here in the low mintage, you have 42D, 43D, and 44S. Now, what did we actually get? We'll take a look at that right now. We got the 45 Philadelphia, which I don't think 45 actually made it onto the list anywhere. It's just the 42D, 43D, and 44S. Uh, we did get the 42 here, but it's just a San Francisco, so that's not the 42 Denver that we're looking for. The same thing here, another San Francisco. And then the one that we just pulled out was a 44 but it's a Philadelphia when we were looking for the 44 San Francisco. Still though, four silver war nickels out of literally seven rolls is unbelievable. Never happened to me before. And we still have, looks like three more rolls to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and get into those and I'll let you know if I find any more silver war nickels or anything else. So in the last couple rolls, I was able to get a few finds. Notably, I have a 1953 right here. And if we actually flip over to the reverse, you can see we have a Denver mint mark, which is uh, pretty good for 53, I believe. I'm gonna flip it over to the uh, other side of the placemat to check that in just a sec here. We also got a 1998 Canadian uh, nickel, which is uh, pretty nice to see. I do like to find those every once in a while. So let's flip over to uh, the reverse of the placemat here and see if that 53 is on the list anywhere. I do see the 53 San Francisco, but no Denver. So with that being said, we are getting into our last roll right here. Uh, final roll of this hunt. Just an amazing hunt, guys. Definitely one of the best ones that I've had in a while. And I can tell you with confidence that I've definitely been missing out uh, on things by not looking through some of these customer wrapped rolls. And what the heck was that? I just saw this bounce off the edge of my finger. This one looks super old. Let's take a look at this one right here. Oh, it's going to be a 1946, it looks like. Let's try and zoom in there. Yep, 1946. We'll flip it over to the reverse. And we actually got a Denver this time, which is Definitely better than the uh, Philadelphia, so I will take that and we'll put that one to the side. Just so you guys know, I do keep everything uh, prior to 19, 1960, I guess, is the cutoff date. So let's see what we're going to get in this last roll uh, on top of that 1946 Denver that we just pulled out. Looks like we are going to be getting another Canadian, and I do see another older coin right there as well. I see a 1940 on top of uh, this Canadian right here, so we'll take a look at... This one, see what we get. This actually looks like it might be a nickel, uh, nickel, nickel, like the, the metal. So we'll take a look at the date there. Ooh, it is, 1980. You hardly ever find the pre-1982 
uh, Canadian nickels, then they're you know a lot harder to find, especially down here in the, the United States. So uh, I'm definitely happy to have that one. This one's actually made of 99.9% .9 nickel, whereas the newer coins uh, are I typically made of either copper or steel. So kind of cool to get a nickel nickel, as we call them, uh, out of that roll. And uh, here we go. We got the 1940. We'll flip this one over to the reverse. Oh, we actually have a San Francisco mark. Uh, mint mark on that one. I'll try and zoom in on that for you. So there's our San Francisco mar mint mark right there to the right of the Monticello. Pretty cool to see a San Francisco come out. We've already got a couple of uh, San Francisco war nickels. I will take a clad any day. All right, so we're only about halfway through that roll and we've already found some really, really great stuff. Um, and this is the last roll in the hunt, sadly. I am going to miss this box quite a bit, <laughs> or I guess it's not really a box, it's just an assortment of coins from the bank. But uh, if we were able to get the boxes, especially the quarter box and the nickel box, man, that would have been one of the best hunts ever. So now I'm gonna organize these coins and get you guys a wrap up, so give me just a sec. So welcome to the wrap up on coin shortage hunt number one. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with these coins, but I am gonna show you what I found today. I'm definitely proud of it. There was a lot of really, really great stuff. So let's go ahead and zoom in on this one right here. The first find we got was our first West Point quarter from 2020 with the privy mark right there on the left-hand side, as you can see. And uh, it was one of my favorites. It looks like it's upside down, but it's not because these are bats. American Samoa National Park Quarter 2020. Very, very cool. And then right after that, we were able to get a proof coin, which is pretty crazy to see come out of uh, any denomination, really. They don't show up too often. And uh, this one ended up being a 2002 Louisiana. So pretty cool coin right there. Obviously, my favorite coin to come out of this was the 1954 Silver Quarter. You can see this one has definitely uh, been through circulation for quite a while, and uh, it's just a really, really nice coin to come out. Obviously, silver doesn't come out of uh, quarters very often. And then, of course, we got a whole bunch of bicentennials, which I do like to keep. Now moving on to the next denomination that we hunted, I guess we'll come on over here. So we have dimes, and uh, it looks like the best finds that we were able to get were a couple of Canadian dimes, and then this weird one right here, which kind of has these little blotches. I'm not really sure what to make of that. It might be an error, though, so I'm going to hold on to it. I'm sure you guys will let me know uh, down in the comments below. Obviously, um, the nickels were the most plentiful. If, as you can see right here, we had tons and tons of finds. There's four silver war nickels right there. A couple of coins from the 40s and 50s. We got 40, 41, 46, 53, a whole bunch of Canadians. We actually were able to get a uh, nickel nickel, which is what we call them, 99.9% .9 nickels. Uh, and those are the pre-1982s. We also got this one right here, which I believe may actually be uh, a special mint set coin. It's just an absolutely phenomenal shape as you can see right there, beautiful coin. And then uh, we got three weird foreign coins slash no monetary value coins, uh, which were all pretty cool as well. And then uh, moving down to the pennies over here, we were able to get a single wheat penny. You can see right here, this is uh, the one that we were able to get. This is the 1944, pretty common coin. And then we got two of the 2009s. This one is the formative years and the professional life. And then on top of that, uh, we were able to get quite a few Canadian pennies as well. So all in all, fantastic hunt, guys. Can't beat the silver. We got four silver war nickels and then a silver quarter. And I think that those are about even as far as silver content goes because the nickels only have 35% silver. And this silver quarter right here actually has 90% silver. Fantastic hunt, guys. I'm hoping that you guys had as much fun as I did. I've definitely set the bar pretty high for these hunts at this point, so I'm a little bit worried for the next one. Uh, I think we can make it work, though, and uh, I'm definitely excited to get into some more customer wrap rolls. So, guys, as always, if you want one or all of the coin roll hunting placemats that I used in today's video, you can check them out on my website at quinscoins.com, and I'll be putting a link down in the description below. They each have two sides, and they show you all the different types of coins that you could find in uh, the rolls that you're searching, whether it be nickels, dimes, quarters, or pennies. And we just came out with this new silver stacking mat for dimes, quarters, and even half dollars. It's gonna cover everything for you. So definitely grab those while you can. You can either get them individually or the entire set for a discounted price on my website at quinzcoins.com, and I'll put links down in the description below. But anyways, guys, that's gonna pretty much do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to go down below and leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new because I post new videos like this every single week, always bringing you along with the hunts and having a good time. And as always, I'm Quinn, and this is Quinn's Coins signing out, and I will see you in the next one.